chapter 21, Goodbye Violet. This gum, Mr Wonka went on, is my latest, greatest, most fascinating invention. It's a chewing gum meal. It's, 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 that tiny little strip of gum lying there is a whole three course dinner all by itself. What sort of nonsense is this? said one of the fathers. My dear sir, cried Mr Wonka, when I start selling this gum in the shops, it will change everything. It will be the end of all kitchens and all cooking. There will be no more shopping to do. There will be no more buying of meat and groceries. There'll be no knives and forks at mealtimes, no plates, no washing up, no rubbish, no mess. Just a little strip of Wonka's magic chewing gum. And that's all you'll ever need at breakfast, lunch and supper. This piece of gum I've just made happens to be tomato soup, roast beef and blueberry pie. But you can have almost anything you want. What do you mean it's a tomato soup and blueberry pie, said Violet Beauregard. If you start chewing it, said Mr Wonka, then that is exactly what you will get on the menu. It's absolutely amazing. You can actually feed the food, feel the food going down your throat and into your tummy and you can taste it perfectly and it fills you up. It satisfies you. It's terrific. It's utterly impossible, said Baruch Salt. Just so long as it's gum, shouted Violet Beauregard, just so long as it's a piece of gum and I can chew it, then that's for me. And quickly, she took her own world record piece of chewing gum out of her mouth and stuck it behind her left ear. Come on, Mr Wonka, she said, hand over this magic gum of yours and we'll see if the thing works. Now, Violet, said Mrs Beauregard, her mother, don't do anything silly, Violet. I want the gum, Violet said obstinately. What's so silly? I would rather you didn't take it, said Mr Wonka, gently. You see, I haven't got it quite right yet. There are still one or two things. Oh, blazes with that, said Violet. And suddenly, before Mr Wonka could stop her, she shot out a fat hand and grabbed the stick of gum out of the little drawer and popped it into her mouth. At once, her huge, well-trained jaws started chewing away on it like a pair of tongs. Don't! said Mr Wonka. <gasps> Fabulous, shouted Violet. It's tomato soup. It's hot and creamy and delicious. I can feel it running down my throat. Stop, said Mr Wonka. Wonka. The gum isn't ready yet. It's not right. Of course it's right, said Violet. It's working beautifully. Oh my, what lovely soup this is. Spit it out, said Mr Wonka. It's changing, said Violet chewing and grinning both at the same time. The second course is coming up. It's roast beef. It's tender and juicy. Oh boy, what a flavour. The baked potato is marvellous too. It's got a crispy skin and it's all filled with butter inside. How interesting, Violet, said Mr Beauregard. You are a clever girl. Keep chewing, baby, said Mr Beauregard. Keep right on chewing. This is a great day for the Beauregards. Our little girl is the first person in the world to have a chewing gum meal. Everybody was watching Violet Beauregard as she stood there chewing this extraordinary gum. Little Charlie Bucket was staring at her absolutely spellbound, watching her huge rubbery lips as they pressed and unpressed with the chewing and Grandpa Joe stood beside him, gaping at the girl. Mr Wonka was wringing his hands and saying, No, 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 it isn't ready for eating, it isn't right, you mustn't do it. Blueberry pie and ice cream, shouted Violet. Here it comes. Oh my, it's perfect. It's beautiful. It's, it's exactly as though I'm swallowing it. It's as though I'm chewing and swallowing great big spoonfuls of the most mar marvellous blueberry pie in the world. Good heavens, girl, shrieked Mrs Beauregard, suddenly staring at Violet. What is happening to your nose? Oh, be quiet, mother. Let me finish, said Violet. It's turning blue screamed Mrs Beauregard. Your nose is turning as blue as a blueberry. Your mother is right, shouted Mr Beauregard. Your whole nose has gone purple. What do you mean, said Violet, still chewing. Your cheeks, screamed Mrs Beauregard. They're turning blue as well. So's your chin. Your whole face is turning blue. Spit out the gum at once, ordered Mr Beauregard. Mercy save us, yelled Mrs Beauregard. The girl's going blue and purple all over. Even her hair is changing colour. Violet, you're turning 
Violet, Violet, what is happening to you? I told you I hadn't quite got it right, sighed Mr Wonka, shaking his head. I'll say you haven't, said Mrs Beauregard. Just look at the girl now. Everyone was staring at Violet, and what a terrible, peculiar sight she was. Her face and hands, legs and neck, in fact, the skin all over her body, as well as her great big mop of curly hair, had turned a brilliant purplish blue, the colour of blueberry juice. It always goes wrong when we come to the dessert, sighed Mr Wonka. It's the blueberry pie that does it. But I'll get it right one day, you wait and see. Violet! screamed Mrs Beauregard. You're swelling up! Oh, I feel sick, said Violet. You're swelling up! screamed Mrs Beauregard again. I feel most peculiar, gasped Violet. I'm not surprised, said Mr Beauregard. Great heavens, girl, screeched Mrs Beauregard. You're blowing up like a balloon. Like a blueberry, said Mr Wonka. Call a doctor, shouted Mr Beauregard. Prick her with a pin, said one of the other fathers. See her, cried Mrs Beauregard, wringing her hands. But there was no saving her now. Her body was swelling up and changing shape at such a rate that within a minute it had turned into nothing less than an enormous round black, an enormous round blue ball, a gigantic blueberry in fact. And all that remained of Violet Beauregard herself was a tiny pair of legs and a tiny pair of arms sticking out of the great round fruit and a little head on top. It always happens like this, sighed Mr Wonka. I've tried it 20 times in the testing room on 20 Oompa and every one of them has finished up a blueberry. It's most annoying. I just can't understand it. But I don't want a blueberry for a daughter yelled Mrs Beauregard. Put her back to what she was this instant. Mr Wonka clicked his fingers and ten Oompa Loompas appeared immediately by his side. Roll Miss Beauregard into the boat, he said to them, and take her along to the juicing room at once. The juicing room? cried Mrs Beauregard. What are they going to do to her there? Squeeze her, said Mr Wonka. We've got to squeeze the juice out of her immediately. After that, we'll just have to see how she comes out. But don't worry, my dear Beauregard, we'll get her all repaired if it's the last thing we do. I'm sorry about it all, really I am. Already the ten Oompa Loompas were rolling the enormous blueberry across the floor of the inventing room towards the door that led to the chocolate river where the boat was waiting. Mr and Mrs Beauregard hurried after them. The rest of the party, including little Charlie Bucket and Grandpa Joe, stood absolutely still and watched them go. Listen, whispered Charlie. Listen, Grandpa, the Oompa Loompas in the boat outside are starting to sing. Little voices, one hundred of them singing together, came loud and clear into the room. Dear friends, we surely all agree there's almost nothing worse to see than some repulsive little bum who's always chewing, chewing gum. It's very near as bad as those who sit around and pick their nose. So please believe us when I say that chewing gum will never pay. This sticky habit's bound to send the chewer to a sticky end. Did any of you ever know a person called Miss Bigelow, this dreadful woman saw no wrong in chewing, chewing all day long. She chewed while bathing in the tub. She chewed while dancing at her club. She chewed in church and on the bus. It really was quite ludicrous. And when she couldn't find her gum, she chew up the linoleum or anything that happened near. A pair of boots, the postman's ear, or other people's underclothes. And once she chewed her boyfriend's nose. She went on chewing till at last her chewing muscles grew so vast that from her face a giant chin stuck out just like a violin. For years and years she chewed away, consuming fifty bits a day, until one summer's eve, alas, a horrid business came to pass. Miss Bigelow went late to bed, for half an hour she lay and read. Chewing, chewing all the while, like some grey clockwork crocodile. At last she put her gum away, 
upon a special little tray and settled back and went to sleep. She managed this by counting sheep, but now how strange, although she slept, those massive jaws of hers still kept on chewing, chewing through the night, even with no nothing there to bite. They were, you see, in such a groove, they positively had to move, and very grim it was to hear, in pitchy darkness loud and clear, the sleeping woman's great big trap, opening and shutting, snap, 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 faster and faster, chop, 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 the noise went on, it wouldn't stop, until at last her jaws decide to pause and open extra wide, and with the most tremendous chew, they bit the lady's tongue in two. Thereafter, just from chewing gum, Miss Bigelow was always dumb, and spent her life shut up in some disgusting sanatorium. And that is when we'll try so hard to save Miss Violet Beauregard from suffering an equal fate. She's still quite young, it's not too late, provided she survives the cure. We hope she does, we can't be sure.